This handsome man from Brazil dedicated his life as a security guard for a children's hospital. But to no one's knowledge, he had a secret that no one would have deemed possible. That is, that during his years working security, he took the lives of 39 confirmed people between 2011 and 2014. Today's video is a chilling reminder that no matter how someone appears or acts, behind their calm composure and handsome look, a beast could be lying inside, waiting for the next urge to take over. Welcome to Twisted Minds. My name's James, and today we are going to look into the case of Tiago Henrique Gomez de Roca, aka the Motorcycle Killer. As a child, Tiago de Roca never got to meet his father, as he had abandoned the family before he was born. He was raised by his grandparents and mother, who had eventually begun a relationship with another man. According to neighbors, Tiago's mother was rarely around, leaving him in the care of his loving grandparents. Unfortunately, one of Tiago's sickening neighbors took advantage of this observation, and he'd essayed Tiago while his mother was out. De Roca was just 11 years old at the time of the incident. To add to his torment, he was also bullied badly at school. In an interview after being caught, he described how he had feelings for both girls and boys, who didn't reciprocate those feelings. This is what Tiago blamed his feelings of anger toward his victims on, which turned into something truly evil. I don't know about you, but I think every single guy who has ever went to high school will have their stories of rejections when hormones are running high. It's just part of life and definitely isn't a reason to commit the callous crimes that Tiago went on to do. But it is important to remember that Tiago was the victim of SA at a young age, which causes extreme irreversible trauma. Once high school was over, Tiago was described as a very shy and quiet man. Despite this, he went on to become a very tall and handsome man with a fairly big frame. This enabled him to land security jobs pretty easily. Because of his shy nature, his family never had any suspicion that the nice guy of the household was actually a serial killer who would eventually take the lives of 39 innocent people. Not even Tiago's girlfriend suspected that anything was going on out of the norm. Tiago's last job was a security guard at a children's hospital. According to colleagues, he was a good worker and a nice guy to be around. He had only been hired two months before being arrested, which meant he had already taken almost 40 lives at the time of watching over a hospital full of sick children. Absolutely chilling. Tiago's main style of killing was to drive up to his victims on his motorcycle and scream, robbery, before pulling out a revolver and shooting his victims at point blank. He would often then drive off with stolen license plates so that it could not be traced. He wouldn't even take any of their money or belongings. When asked about his victims, Tiago said that he would randomly choose a victim after thinking about committing a murder for a few days. He said that he had no set type, not caring about their gender. All he wanted was to take a life and he didn't really care who it was. Although the killer said he wasn't fussy when it came to his victims, there were certain patterns that emerged. Most of the victims were young women, homeless people and cross-dressers. He even admitted to targeting prostitutes and homosexuals too. His first victim was a man, the first of 17 men he would go on to kill. In that same year, he turned his attention to young women. His first young female victim was 14-year-old Barbara Costa, who had been waiting for her grandmother in a public square on January 18th. The killer casually rode up to her before shooting her in the chest. The next day, 23-year-old Beatriz Mora was also shot by Tiago from his motorcycle. On another occasion, he tried to kill another woman, but the gun jammed. In a panic, he sped off down the road. This behavior shows that he wasn't always feeling confident about confronting people, or else he would have tried to kill her another way after the gun had failed. The 
The majority of his victims were gunned down from his motorbike after he pulled right up to them. Tiago did not only limit himself to using his gun, as he stabbed Song men and strangled a number of prostitutes too. When asked what he felt the morning after killing someone, he said that he felt regret. In fact, in an interview he said, I'd like to ask for forgiveness, but I think it's too difficult to ask for forgiveness right now. Many believe the regret he claimed he had was just a way to appear more human to get a lesser sentence. A 25 year old who came up against the cold hearted killer in April 2014, unbelievably survived her encounter. He drove up to her on his motorbike, stopped at the victim and said, you're looking at my face. You are looking at my eyes for what? You are thinking that I'm beautiful? Tell me I'm beautiful. After getting no compliment, he headbutted the victim and fired at her four times. Luckily for her, only one shot hit her foot, with the others missing entirely. The police knew that they were dealing with a serial killer, with the skill of getting away. In the course of their investigation, the military police of Goaz State, Brazil, obtained a number of images of Tiago captured by security cameras at crime scenes around the time of the murders. What is more, in some of the photographs, it appears that Tiago is holding a weapon. Pretty damning evidence, if you ask me. On August 2nd, 2014, minutes after the murder of 14-year-old Ana Lida Gomez, the motorcycle Tiago was riding had been photographed driving above the speed limit. The photographed plates were a damning piece of evidence against the motorcycle killer. On August 4th, a civil police task force was set up, which included 16 delegates, 30 investigators, and 10 clerks. A clue that also helped in investigations was the accusation against Tiago back in 2013 for stealing a motorcycle license plate in a supermarket parking lot, which would have been used to cover his tracks after a murder. Unfortunately for Tiago, his actions were recorded by a security camera. Also in 2013, he was arrested for using a motorcycle with a stolen license plate. With all the mounting evidence they had against Tiago, they arrested him on October 14, 2014, with the suspect sent to the State Homicide Investigation Police Station where he was interrogated. After a number of hours, 26-year-old Tiago confessed to the crimes. What the police didn't expect, however, was the ice-cold confessions to 39 murders. The officers who had interrogated him reported that after describing each murder, Tiago would fall in a state of trance for five minutes and relive the murder in his head, just like playing a tape. He would even smile sometimes, thinking about his favorite moments. Sitting in a room and speaking with this guy must have been truly terrifying. In his home, a number of items connected to his crimes were found, including a revolver, which he confessed to have stolen from the security company he worked for. Tiago was questioned by eight delegates during the deposition, where he described his victims only by numbers. Yes. This guy was so cold that he numbered them in the order he killed them right up to number 39. Can you imagine how this dehumanizing affected the poor families? This is what we here at Twisted Minds like to call pure evil. Two days after being arrested, Tiago tried to kill himself by slicing his wrists with the glass of a broken lamp. Officers quickly realized what was happening and stopped him before he could cause any life-threatening damage to himself. In October 2014, shortly before being transferred to a penitentiary, Tiago was given an informal psychological evaluation, which concluded that Tiago matched the textbook personality traits of a serial killer with psychopathic tendencies. In early February 2015, Tiago was evaluated by two psychiatrists of the medical board at the request of the judges dealing with the case. In the assessment, which was released to the public three days later, Tiago was officially diagnosed as being a psychopath, but was still liable for his actions. When asked why he killed 39 people, he answered that it was a way to let out his building rage which began when he was just a young child. He explained that he had been essayed by a neighbor when he was very young and that no matter what he did as he grew older, 
he could never get the rage out of him. This rage would swell, and the only way of calming it was to take a life. When the feelings began to rise again, the thought of killing became a powerful urge, and that powerful urge forced him to act upon it. On October 22nd, he was transferred to a prison complex in Brazil. Initially, he was charged with the illegal possession of a firearm, before the murder trial even began. In April 2015, after being identified for the entire world to see, Thiago was sentenced to 12 years and 4 months in prison for two robberies he committed between September and October 2014 at the same lottery agency. They do say that you need to enter the lottery more than once to increase your chance of winning. In this case, he just increased his chances of being caught. In February 2016, Tiago was sentenced to 20 years in prison for the murder of student Ana Carla Limes de Silva. By March 2016, while the murder trials were underway, there were 42 lawsuits against Tiago, 35 of which for murder. In May 2016, after a lengthy court case, Tiago Henrique Gomez de Roca was convicted of 11 murders and sentenced to 30 years behind bars. It was clear that Tiago couldn't change his ways when he asked a police officer if it was okay to kill other inmates, or would he have to face a trial for it? Tiago did such a good job at playing the nice guy that none of his family could believe he had been a killer. His aunt still doesn't believe the verdict to this day, claiming he was just too nice. She added, All he did was go out to work and look after his mother. He doesn't have a girlfriend. He's not the type to go out to parties. He doesn't have friends. He is just a humble, polite person. He finished his schooling, did a course to work as a security guard, and got a job. She also claims that he is 100% innocent and that the police set him up. Tiago's mother also believes that he is innocent and said that it was impossible for her to believe that he could kill even one person, let alone all the things that he has been accused of. Oh, and admitted to. With that being said, a married woman who allegedly had an affair with the killer said that he got aggressive after she called off the relationship. She said that they had a lot of fun at first, but he began swearing and getting angry, contorting his face with rage. He even wandered into the house uninvited, something that could have been awkward if her husband was sitting down to dinner at the time. It's amazing that Tiago got away with killing for four long years, especially as he committed robberies during that time also. Could it have been his nice guy persona and good looks that allowed him to slip through the net for so long? One thing that we have learned on this channel is that psychopaths and sociopaths can do a very good job of mimicking normality while disguising their evil. The Tiago Henrique Gomez de Roca case is proof that it's not just the loud and confident people who could have murderous intent. It is often the quiet types who can be holding a deadly secret very close to their chest. This case reminds me of Norman Bates from Psycho, a young, shy man who, with the right emotional stimulation, can become a monster and men back into the background. At the end of that movie, while Bates sits in the police cell, his mother says the exact same words that Gomez de Roca family would have been saying about Tiago. He wouldn't even hurt a fly. Thanks for tuning in to Twisted Minds. That was the case of Tiago Henrique Gomez de Roca. Oh, and why don't you go ahead and click on one of the two videos on screen for another one of our videos.